Hey guys, how are you doing? I'm Tiago and today we're also going to talk about modeling. The challenge today is when should I use a link table instead of concatenating facts. I'm going to present to you a scenario where, with the concatenation of facts commonly used, it doesn't meet the expectations. So, we're going to do this project in two versions, both with the link table and the concatenated facts version. And we're going to explore these two scenarios to solve the problem that the client gave us. Okay. Before anything else, let's talk about our data. I have an Excel with four tabs, right? The first two tabs are tables, facts, right? The consultation table has data, patient's day at the hospital, the name of the exam that was performed, and the amount paid. The glucose table has data, patient, glucose result, and the amount paid as well, okay? If we look quickly, we can see that the consultation table and the glucose table have some things in common, right? Like the date and the patient's date at the hospital, and the exam here, for example, which is also not part of the glucose table, right? Similarly, the glucose table has the result field that is not part of the consultation table. Okay, so they have some attributes in common, okay? The patient's table has the patient's ID, main, gender, and birth date. It's a dimension table, a simple registry. The hospital table is also a simple registry with the hospital's ID, name, size, and flag if it has an ICU or not, right? So, two dimensions and two facts, okay? Let's do this first in ClickSense before we do it in ClickSense. Let's first do it in Excel, the simulation of concatenating facts so that we can see how it would look like in ClickSense. Okay, I'm going to take the month of January from my consultation table. I copy it with the header and everything here and paste it in a blank sheet. The glucose table, I'm going to do the same filter and paste it right below the consultation table here. The date field is a common field between the two tables. The patient stay at the hospital is also a common field. The result field is not a common field between the two tables, so it will stay here on the right, okay? The value field is not a common field between the two tables. It's just shifted one column here. I'm going to put it in the right column. So done. Result goes up here, right? Common field. Column title. And this is the concatenation of facts that ClickSense would do, okay? I'm doing this just for the month of January to have fewer lines so that we can understand it better. So let's go. What does our client want? He said, I need two distinct pieces of information. I want to know in January, how many people did a magnetic resonance and of those who did a magnetic resonance, what was their glucose measurement result? So what would he do? Basically, I already have a filter here between quotes. Apply to the month of January, 2023, the exam you would filter is magnetic resonance. But if I do this in the concatenated facts model, only the information that exists in the magnetic resonance table which is the consultation table, will be filtered and returned to me. And this doesn't meet what my client asked because what he asked was, I want to know the glucose result of the patients who did a magnetic resonance, right? So the final result he would like would be something like this, right? Something like this. It wouldn't be exactly like this. It's when I filter for magnetic resonance. It gives me patient one and four. So I'm going to also put the empty ones here, which are the null ones. And the patient, I know it's patient one and four. So it would have patient one and four in the top table and patient one and four in the bottom table. Since these two columns are common attributes between the two tables, facts, right? So this is possible to happen. We can find this information with a simple filter. Even if it's in one of the two fact tables and the filter is not the uncommon attribute between them. When we have a common attribute between the two tables, whatever I filter here, like I filtered patient one and four here, if I remove this filter, it will filter in both tables because it exists in both tables. Okay. But if I filter attributes that only exist in one table and I want it to reflect in another table, then we need to change our way of thinking and we need to use our link table. Okay. Let me delete this, and now let's do this in click sense in both ways. So I'm going to save this here. In click sense, I'm going to create a session called concatenation of facts. And I'm going to load my two fact tables first. I selected both of them here because my intention with concatenation of facts is to turn the two tables into just one thing. I start by calling my initial table fact, okay? I'm going to comment the execution here in this first time of the bottom table. 
I'm going to focus only on the top table to check what types of data the fields were recognized as in click sets. Right. If the date type was recognized as a date and so on. So the date field, when I click on it, ClickSense recognized it as a date, and the patient's day at the hospital is also a date. Okay. The rest doesn't matter as much, except for the value here, which we need to know if it's numerical so we can use it for aggregation functions. Right. But the fields that are common, like date and patient stay at the hospital. They remain filled here for all records, okay? So let's continue with our concatenation and load our dimension tables now, which are the patient and hospital tables. So for the patients, I'm going to name it as patients. And for the hospitals, I'm going to name it as hospitals. Let's check the fields here. Patients have ID, name, gender, and birth date. Hospitals have ID, name, size, and ICU flag, right? So the main field in the patient's table, I'm going to call it patient. And in the hospital's table, I'm going to call it hospital. To finish, we're going to create a calendar so we can play with the dates. I'll download the distinct values of the date field from our fact table. And above it here, I'm going to load the date field, which is our key. Okay, I'm going to create two fields here. The first one will be our month name with the month and year of the date field. And the year field where we extract a year from the date. Okay. I'll call it Anna. So in a few lines of code, we did our load and our model became a star model. With our concatenated tables here, we can even see the drawing that it gave us. The fact table in the center and our three tables around it, all connected to our fact table, okay? But now let's go to the problem. I'm going to add a filter pane so we can filter some things on our screen. Filter pane, fields, I'll put month year heater, exam, and also result. I'll put four KPIs here. I'll put only two actually. Actually, I'll also put a table here. Where is the table? Table dimension will be the month year field. And what will be the metrics of our table here? I'll do the sum of the value field in consultations. And the sum of the value field, blood glucose. We have to go to this perspective of month and year. The value here for each of the months, right? So I'll get the value. Consultations here. I'll copy this metric. Put it in the first one. Copy and the blood glucose value. Also. All right. Where does our jab here? When the client selects the month. I'll take the opportunity to put it as a whole number here. When the client selects the month here for us. Returns here, the value of the consultations and the value of the blood glucose. It returns to both pieces of information, right, which are in two different tables because, why? From the perspective of month and year, the date exists for both tables. So it makes sense for this information with this filter to return to both tables in the same way. If I select the patient here, let's select the patient here. Oh, through our filter area here, let's put the patient OA Maria here. It will return here. The value of the consultations and the value of Maria's blood glucose. Because month and year and patient are values, they are common perspectives between the two tables. Now, when I go to the exam filter or result filter, they are pieces of information that exist only in one of the two tables. For example, if I select the tomography, it will only give the result here. From the value of consultations, because the exam field is only related to consultations. Right? So we cannot do this type of analysis where the filter I am applying in my visualization belongs to one table and does not reference anything from the other table. 
In the model we made, it doesn't work because the tables are concatenated and in column view. The exam field becomes null in the perspective of the table. Blood glucose, right? So it doesn't work for us like this now. If we are going to do this type of analysis, right? Temporal analysis, analysis that have common perspectives between the two tables, like month, year, and the patient. Perfect. This will work here and no null value will occur. So if I also put the patient here, oh. It will also be perfectly filled here. The data, right? From the moment I put the exam, the blood glucose result in this table or I apply a filter in these two fields. In these two fields we will start to see this discrepancy in our modeling, right? So as our scenario goes beyond this analysis here, which would be from the perspective of month, year, and patient, we need to change this to a link table. So that's where it comes into play now. Our link table modeling. So I'm going to create a new script session called link table. For the construction of the link table model, I'd also start with my fact tables, right? With my fact tables. And what will happen here? I no longer have the concatenate, right? The tables will not be concatenated. I will have a table called blood glucose. They will be separate as if they were dimension tables and the consultation table for the construction of our link table model. As you may have seen in previous videos from Raphael, we need to create a composite key using keys that refer to common attributes between the two tables, right? So the fields we have noticed are date and patient. So I'm going to create it like this. This is the key. Now I'm going to join the two fields with a pipe. And the combination of date and patient became the key. It's the same thing. I'm going to do it for the bottom table. So it's the same. And I'm going to leave it as transparent text. All right? You can use auto number or hash anyway. But here the intention is just to see how the difference between the two models works. All right. I already have the fields ready, right? Here for the two fact tables. Now I'm going to move on to the construction of my link table. So let's go here, link table. And the link table consists of loading keys from each of the facts that will communicate in this link table, right? So I'm going to do a two-step load, the first one from the consultation table and the second one from the blood glucose table. All right, so here I'm going to use distinct download, right? It's a table of keys. I load here my key and from my key. What do I load into my link table, right? I load the other keys that will communicate with the dimensions, right? Calendar, patient, hospital. So in the case of consultations, right? And there are these three fields here, patient date and hospital, so I'm going to put it here, oh. I took the opportunity to copy these seals and here, oh, resident, consultations, my first step of the link table is ready. Now I'm going to do the second step. I already take this code snippet here and copy it here, oh, but here I'm going to use the prefix key Nate. Key Nate. Key Nate link table I unload distinct also, and what we are going to load here are fields from the blood glucose table. There's also the key field, right? Date and patient. And the hospital field does not exist, so we already put it here. My link table is ready, so here I put your construction. Comment, right? Construction of the link table. And here, mark it at the end. When we do this, we have a table that will communicate with both the consultation table and the blood glucose table. And this table also has the other keys that will communicate with the dimensions that are around it, right? Which of the three there? Calendar, patient, and hospital. All right, so now that we have done that, what do we need to do now? Since the link table has the keys, we can delete the keys from our source tables. So we will use the drop field command here. And which fields are we going to delete? All the fields that we already loaded into our link table and that will no longer be necessary in our source tables because our source tables have a concatenated field there, right? A composite key whose name is, in fact, it is key, which will communicate and give access to these attributes there in our fact table. All right, so we are going to copy here the key fields that exist in the fact tables. And this one here, consultation, date, patient, and hospital. So here drop field date, patient, and hospital from consultations. And I'm going to copy this drop field here that we are going to drop also in fields from the blood glucose table. All right, I changed my from here to blood glucose, and we know that the hospital field does not exist in the blood glucose table. So after this, I'm going to load to see how it turned out, if there are things to be adjusted, right? So it gave a synthetic key, a circular reference. Let's see what we did here to correct it. Ah, all right, I didn't comment this previous snippet here, right folks? So let's comment this snippet so that it doesn't run anymore. Let's run only the link table snippet, it ran smoothly. No errors and we already see here, the link table in the center. The two tables here, fact, right, communicating and what do we need to do now? Load these dimensions that will be here below, right? I already take the previous code snippet and copy it here. Oh, from patients downwards, I'm going to copy everything. I'll come back commenting as well, right? So after my drop fields here. I already put my dimensions, so we don't need to change anything in patience. 
It was already working, hospitals as well, and my calendar has a detail that I need to change here. The from, right? The resident of my calendar was from the fact table, and here we no longer have the fact table. We have the link table, right? Then here in our modeling we are seeing that the link table is the table that has the date key for our calendar. So we only change this resident and load again. Alright, we have the model here now, right? It's Snowflake, right? The model, where we are using the link table and here we have all our dimensions and facts communicating perfectly through our link table, right? Our link table is now let's check here on our screen, right? In our calculations, if when we filter for information from one table, it is reflected in the other table as well, right? So we'll put January here, we'll get the MRI exam here and just by filtering here, we'll notice that what already appeared, the value here as well. The blood glucose value, right? So the value of the consultations was 1000, right? And the value of the blood glucose was 100. We can even check this in Excel as well, O oh January. We have two occurrences of MRI, value of 1000, same patient 1 and 4, patients 1 and 4. We go back to the blood glucose table, we filter for January as well and filter only patients 1 and 4. And we have the value of 100 for blood glucose as well. We saw that it's already working, right? Our model, admit the expectations of what our client had requested and in this way we are ready to deliver this project. And this is how we can solve this deadlock. Would it occur to us, right? So ideally, we should always seek the concatenation of facts, right? Our star model, because we will write less code with it and it will deliver greater performance for us. Alright? It is less complex, even for us to maintain, but since it did not meet our needs, we needed to create our link table model, which in a small scenario will not burden our performance and will address this issue of filters. Alright? So this is how we end the video, a hug to everyone, much success.